Let's talk about this equation. Ah yes, another evil equation, straight from my mad laboratory. Alright, so what is this thing? First of all, if you want to take a crack at it on your own, by all means, pause the video and try it out. Now, before I go on explaining this monstrosity to all of you, let's take a look at another equation I made not too long ago. My video about this crazy thing got quite a bit of views. I was actually surprised how well it did. The idea behind these equations is that there's no visible numbers. There appears to be only one variable denoted by the letter n. In both of these scary things, we are seeking to find the limit as n approaches infinity. This particular equation results in e, the famous Euler number. As for this new beast here, which I called the evil equation, well, you'll have to wait till the end of this video to know the solution. But I think some of you might already have a guess as to what it is. Now just to be clear, as far as I know, this monster breaks Wolfram Alpha, and it was a tremendous pain in the butt making it work. The first time I threw this thing into the ether of the internet, I actually messed up. These were supposed to be ceiling functions, not floor functions. Fortunately, that video didn't do too well, so the mistake went unnoticed. Now, speaking of floor and ceiling, you will notice that this evil thing has quite a few of them. I kind of wish it didn't, but it gives the whole thing a bit of an intimidating appearance. And originally I had the main floor function contain the limit indicated inside, but I decided it looks better when the limit is outside. I really hope that doesn't actually affect the equation, but if it does, please let me know in the comments. The other thing you will notice about this evil equation is that not all terms involve the variable m. There's a pi here and there's an m here. The m kind of cannot be avoided, otherwise I wouldn't be able to use this fun looking sigma here. And I chose m because it resembles an n and can kind of disappear in this mess. Then there's this pi here. To be honest, I could have maybe done something like this, but I didn't want to deal with complex numbers. Plus the whole thing was just getting really long, and my goal is to make an aesthetically pleasing equation, not an endless mess of variables. It's also kind of nice to just sneak a pi in there. Alright, now that we have the basics, let's get into the real grimy parts of this foul demon. The first thing to know is that this and this are two different parts. Also, this little thing is outside of the summation. Ideally, this whole thing would have brackets, like so, but because I'm evil, I omitted those in order to make my equation look all that much more scary and confusing. And yes, technically that's not illegal. Let's start with the summation here. Yeah, this by itself looks pretty nasty. I love it. So okay, this thing on top. This is the original limit equation that inspired the whole thing and results in E. Now getting the floor of E simply makes this into 2. At least I'm fairly confident it does. Like I said, floor functions and limits quickly break Wolfram, and I had to rely on my own conclusions. But knowing that this sum has 2 as its upper index, it makes it a hundred times easier. Now, for this radical here. As n moves towards infinity, this crazy thing gets reduced to 1. I know, the magic of limits is amazing. Now that our summation became this simple, we can just convert it to a normal expression. This n can be pulled out. 1 plus 2 becomes 3. This negative n over n just becomes negative 1, making this whole thing just go under those two n's. And we can now get rid of them altogether. Our incredibly intimidating summation turns out to be nothing more than a simple two-thirds, which leaves us with this other half of the problem. Now again, feel free to pause at any time to see if we can solve the rest of it. Let's begin with this thing, a factorial of negative n over n plus n. So just like before, we can do some basic arithmetic to get rid of these n's which leaves us with this unique expression. Now this is one of those fascinating equations that has pi in it for reasons that aren't entirely obvious. Factorial of negative half ends up as the square root of pi. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but I like using weird stuff like that. Also I like the fact that this pi is there as a kind of a hint. So ceiling of pi becomes 4, and 4 cancels the square root to simply leave us with pi squared, which results in 9.869 and so on. And when you take that to the ceiling, you end up with 10. Amazing, I know. All this leaves us is this crazy looking thing. Except that it isn't at all crazy. We already know that these radicals end up as 1's, leaving us with this. And all this is, is just 3 n's over n. Cancel the n's, and we end up with 1 third. Convert the radical, and this whole thing just becomes 10 cubed, which simply is 1,000. And here we finally are, 2 thirds times 1000. This should be familiar to anyone who has seen my other videos regarding numbers with repeating digits. An incredibly elaborate formula with this ridiculous solution 
Indeed, a very evil equation. I certainly like it, but I do wish it had more Euler numbers in there. Maybe next time. I hope you enjoyed me breaking down this absurd monstrosity. Please like, subscribe, and share. Let's make this channel grow and help me keep making those insane math videos. And thanks for watching.